hello and welcome to another episode of Command Block Basics. Today we're going to be learning about Fireball, summoning it, and all the different tags that it has to offer. Fireball is also one of my favorite spells in D&D, and that's why we're here in my little bit of a study. Because, little did you know, I'm a master wizard. Anyways, let's get started. So let's go over here to my testing area, and Fireball, on top of the normal summon command, you also have to put in a direction tag, or else the command simply just won't work. Right now the direction is at zero, and we'll get into how direction affects it here in just a moment. But we hit that, and it will disappear for a moment when it's first summoned, when it has zero movement. I don't know why it does this, or how to stop that other than to uh, have it have movement. So you hit it, and it will go in the direction of where you're facing when you hit it. So we have it here again, and we can hit it in whatever direction we want. Going over here into our little testing area, we can have a fireball right here. And whenever a player hits a fireball, it will cause it to do as much damage and destroy as many blocks as if a ghast fired it. This is a part of the coding due to players redirecting fireballs uh, back into ghast. Which, by the way, if you did not know, if you fire a fireball back to a ghast, it does possibly 500 times as much damage as it normally can. But also, explosion damage numbers are very, very weird, and I don't like math. I'm only good at the logic of these commands. Anyways. Over here we have the bit where we learn about direction. So, this right here, it is going in direction X, Point two, and how this actually works is this means that it's going to go two blocks in that direction. If uh, we put it right here, then it's going to be 22 blocks in that direction. So if it comes into contact with something before it stops, it will explode. But if we hit it like this, it will only go one block as what that command says and just completely stop. At which point you can hit it, do whatever, but yeah, um, it will still be changed as the player hits it if you do it with this uh, move in slightly command. It also seems like the block has to have some movement that is at least 0.1 or higher when it hits something to explode. And let's test this out. So over here, we have some not-so-friendly pirates, and we have a cannon over here. So let's load the cannon up with this little block of wool that I got earlier, and boom. It heads off in that particular direction. This is good for having a setup where you want a fireball to fire in a particular direction, without too much player input. So this would be good to add on into a ship or something. Over here we have the power tag, and power is a lot different in direction in the idea of power is how much it accelerates per tick. So a fireball that has a movement of, let's say, 0.1 starting off, will gain 0.1 speed every single in-game tick. So as you can see, that moves pretty fast compared to the other ones over there. Coming over here, we have a ship off in the distance. And we can hit this. That has a 
power of 0.1, and as you can see, you got there pretty quickly. That's a hundred blocks away. But it doesn't really give you a good sense of how long it takes to get there since it's so far away, so let's actually step onto it. And here comes the fireball. As you can see, it came pretty quickly. Over here, we're going to be looking at explosion power and kind of the nice big oomph of fireball. In the other commands, if you don't give it an actual explosion amount, then it will, well, have no explosion power. It won't destroy any blocks. And in the example for, let's say, the ship over here, As you can see, that one has no explosion power, and on the actual ship, this one had 15. As you can tell, it does quite a bit of damage. Now, going over to uh, test this out, that wasn't... Where's my fireball? Oh! So... Explosion power. Uh, there's a little bit of a tricky thing with this. So, as you can see, you just put in a comma and then the actual tag itself after direction. And right here we have explosion power 3, but I found something kind of weird with this. If you spawn in a fireball with no direction and an explosion power, you can't hit it. And I don't know why. So let's kill that off and summon another one. This one, it goes a little bit... It still has... Explosion Peril 1 on this particular one. And we can actually hit it, since it had a direction. And... Explosion Peril 1 doesn't do too much, but let's... Take a look over here. We're going to look at how much things explode with Explosion Power 1 up to Explosion Power 5. The red bit right here is the center, and the orange bit is where it typically will explode. So as you can see, it's a 3x3 spot down there. Coming over here to Explosion Power 2, it will put at this little cross thing, but as you can see I have these yellow bits there. The yellow parts are blocks that have a chance of exploding, but it isn't guaranteed. Coming over here a little bit further, we have Explosion Power 3. As you can see, it has a little bit more of an impact. Up here, you can see that's the center. The orange bits will always explode, and the yellow... Slight chance green is a pretty less often chance to explode, but sometimes still will. Explosion power 4. Let's take a look at what this does. As you can see, that's a pretty sizable crater. With its explosion looking just like this. And over here on the last one, that is going to look a bit like that. As you can see, there's quite a big difference just going up by one each time. Typically, it's a one block radius difference, but um, it seems like there's a little bit of variation in how it can grow. As you can see, the yellow area grew through the increase between that one, while back here it's the orange area, and back here there's only just a little bit of yellow. You can test for it yourself and see the differences in explosion power higher than 5. But for now, I think that's all the basics that you should know about summoning fireballs. Let's hop back down here. And back into my study. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Command Block Basics, and if you did, then feel free to subscribe and see more content like this. I upload videos 
kind of regularly. A little bit. But yeah, until next time. Mm, bye. So, I tried to do something that I used to do back in the day, back before uh, repeat commands ended up being a thing, and uh, this is what you call a uh, kind of a command block instant clock. So, uh, it would always end up respawning the command block there. This command would set it, this command would fill it with air, and they would just kind of keep going back and forth and never end. But, um, you would use it to basically repeat how you would have the uh, repeat command, and I was curious how it worked out today. And, uh, they made it to where it doesn't have a weird visual anymore. And whenever you break it, it actually has a bit of a window where you see that it's not there. Which it used to not do. And over here we have a command that I absolutely loved back in the day, which is... Uh, executing as a snowball to summon a fireball at its spot. Now... Doing this particular command would cause the fireball to just keep teleporting to the snowball. Even though you would be technically summoning a new one, it didn't actually count it as that. And I was figuring out how it would work out nowadays, and... Yeah, it does this now. <laughs> um... Which... Like, is as expected, and it actually travels in the snowball snowball arc now, which you would also expect, but, uh, it's... Yeah, if you ever want to have, like, a line of fireballs for some reason... <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous, my computer's lagging. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you can use it as, like, a delayed explosion, if, uh... Oh, nope, not really. Okay, it lost its... Oh. I have no clue what it thinks it's doing at that point. But also, I'm kind of curious what it would look like if you, uh... Set it as repeat now and always active. Oh, same thing. Okay. But yeah, that's just a little thing about what happened in the past with uh, some fun commands. I mean, I kind of miss that this used to be a thing, but you can do so much more with command blocks now, and you can probably find a way to replicate it. It's just, it's something I kind of miss. But yeah, that's it for the end of the video. Um, I really hope that you found some ways to figure out how to use this for yourself. I had a few examples throughout the video, but this is really more of a uh, way to help you learn how to use it. At any rate, I hope you all had a good one, and bye!